Hello everyone. Today we're going to try some different methods to draw the sun, to draw and color the sun. So instead of using watercolors, we're going to use um, Crayola markers or whatever, whatever kind of markers you have. At least I'll show you how to do that. If you do want to just um, use your watercolors, you can still do that as well. But this is kind of a fun method and it works well with, um, with showing the sun. So you can uh, write the word sun in nice warm colors like oranges. You can add yellows um, and kind of like we did with the seasons, add color to represent what we're, um, what we're talking about. So I'll go ahead and turn the page. I will use a yogurt lid to draw a nice big circle for the sun and then I will write up here our title sun you can put it wherever you want I'll just have mine on the side so um, and then I'm gonna write we need the sun for life I'm also going to write the date that I'm making this page. It's in March, whatever date you're doing, 2022. Okay. So, um, the sun is just made of gases. You can write that down too. Um, mostly hydrogen, kind of big science words, and some helium. So we'll talk about some different parts of it, of what scientists can um, see on the sun surface. But something to always remember is never look straight at the sun. Very dangerous for your eyes. But scientists have special telescopes and equipment where they can look and um, get pictures like this. And this is what we're going to draw today I'm using this as a guide. Um, there's also lots of pictures online that you can look at with your parents. But what I'm going to do today is like I said, using markers, and I'm also using some um, oil pastels, if you have some of those, or just regular crayon. And what I'm gonna do with the oil pastel is use it as what's called a resist, so that when I put the oil pastel down, and I'll, I'll do this right over here, um, when, I, when I put the markers on top, the oil pastel will resist it and won't let the marker cover up this yellow. So it's a good tool if you want lighter colors and then putting on darker colors. So this is where those gases will well up in, in these big um, big spots of yellow. And then also I'm going to draw what's called a solar flare. It's like a storm on the Earth's surface and I'm going to use my oil pastel to draw that so it will resist because I'm going to do a darker color over it. Um, I'll do another one maybe over here, another solar flare, maybe a little smaller. Okay, there, you can also um, draw around the outside edge of your circle that you drew with pencil when you traced around your yogurt lid or whatever round object you have. And this will be represent what's called the corona, the outer edge of the sun. And usually um, we can only see the corona when there's an eclipse, but this is what it looks like. When the eclipse blocks the rest of the sun, you can still see the, the outermost layer. Um, okay, so I've used my oil pastel on here. Do a few more areas, and then I'm gonna take my markers. I can use still some yellow and put some like that on around the edges, uh, using the edge of the marker. And 
Then I'm going to, okay, I'll do a little bit more. So this yellow is going to blend with orange when I use a brush with just plain water on it. So what I'm going to do first is just, I think I'll use more yellow around this sun. So this is different than the oil pastel I used. This won't resist water and you'll see what happens with it. It's really pretty fun. You can use this for all kinds of different art. So I wanted to show you ways you can use markers. And they're kind of going to kind of work as um, like watercolors. It's just a different fun way to use art supplies. And a lot of you will have markers at home. If you don't, it's fine just to use your watercolors instead to paint on some different blotches of color and then let them um, blend together. I'm going to also use a little bit of red. Some of the pictures we see of the sun show some red. I'm going to put some around the edges to kind of show that it's a little darker around the edges to show some what's called volume, that it's not really flat like like if it was just on a piece of paper, but it does, it is round like a ball. And gravity is what holds it together in a big ball of gases, and it's constantly changing and moving with gases welling up and going back down. Now I'm taking my brush, I just have plain water on it, and I'm going to spread it around and let the um, water blend these markers together. And it's just really fun to see how that happens. Now I can go over the yellow. Now this is where I had the oil pastel, and that's where it's resisting it. It's um, because there's oil in the water or in the oil pastel, it doesn't it resists water. So um, I'm just spreading this water around and letting the, the colors blend. But I did want some areas that were just yellow because that shows up on the sun like that. And then so it's easiest was easiest in this case to just put some oil pastel down where I just wanted it to be yellow. Okay. And then another thing we can do to kind of show some of this, like it kind of it looks like a grainy texture of the sun is um, put um, some salt on top and it, it often when you put salt on it it'll kind of some of the color will um, be pushed away by the salt and make um, some some fun texture kind of like what we see on the sun and I think we've used this before this method um, so it doesn't need to take very much and it'll work best on areas that are still a little damp um, okay, another part that we can do, um, well, why don't we go ahead and, um, just add some color to our title. You can go over that in marker. You can do several different colors. You can use all these warm colors. Warm colors are colors like you would see on the sun, um, or in a fire. And... Um, and you can even like do some little sun rays around there too, just to kind of make it more fun and interesting. Okay. Now to make the sun look really, really light and glowing, we'll put around the dark sky that is around it. And you can just kind of do a box if you want and you can draw over right by these solar flares and around the corona, the other solar flare. And the marker will resist all that, just like it did when we painted it. Won't go over it very easily. 
because we, we want to leave that the light areas <clears throat> and um, uh, you can just draw a box around it or you could go all the way to the edge of the paper and just use your marker to color in dark areas all the way around the sun. And then we'll take our wet brush and blend all that in so that it's more solid. So you want it to be kind of neat to, to not, um, you know, go all over the place, but inside here you can just kind of um, put in a lot of the, the dark pigment and um, then we'll blend that in with, with our water on our brush. Okay, so I'm filling this all in. A lot of times when you're using marker, it's important to have it, you know, go in, in one direction or the other, depending on the texture. But since we're going to blend this all in with a paintbrush, it's not as important. I'm also going to add some purple just to make it more interesting. A lot of times I talk about how I don't usually use black, but in this case, it's the closest, it's the best color I have with the markers to show really, really dark, dark um, atmosphere around the sun. Okay, now I'm going to use my brush and dip it in water again and just blend this all together. So I have dark, dark sky and that helps this contrast of the dark against the light helps the sun to look more glowy and light. Okay. So the sun is like um, about the same size, maybe even a little smaller than a lot of the stars we see in the sky. It just looks bigger to us and impacts us because it's at the center of our universe and it's the closest star to us. But it's kind of an average star, so we can learn a lot about um, a lot of stars by studying the sun. Um, so it's the center of our universe, and like I said before, we need it for life. We need it for heat and light and the energy that plants need to make food for themselves, for animals, and for us. The sun is very, very important. <clears throat> it gets to 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface and 27 million degrees Fahrenheit in the center. Um, so these are solar flares, and these are just kind of showing some of the gases rising to the surface. And then there's one more um, part of the Earth that, or the sun that we can talk about, and these are sunspots that you can put on your um, on your sun with a marker, or you could even just take some of the color from. Um, from um, the background and paint some sunspots on there. So, something else about the sun is in relation to the Earth is that over a million Earths can fit in the sun. So here's like maybe what, what the Earth would look like approximately. Maybe even a little, a little big, but one million. You could say over one million Earths could fit in the sun. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. And um, it is nowhere near this close to the sun. It is 93, the Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. 
So you could write that down if you want. I'm just writing these things down if, if you and your parents want you to, that's fine. Um, and sometimes you'll see different pictures of how the sun looks depending on the filters that they, they use on the cameras. So you can see a little bit of the um, texture that we get from the, um, the salt. So texture, again, is one of the elements of art that we've talked about before. And we have um, line. Again, here, I'll just write this again. Just these are, I'm just repeat this a lot just because it's a way of understanding art that you do and art that um, other artists do that you like to look at. So line makes the shape. And then there's line and shape. There's um, volume, which means that we try to make something that's on a flat piece of paper look like it has... Um, uh, dimension to it and it, there's space and obviously the sun is in space and there's um, volume or form you could say um, and then there's color we used the warm colors for the sun and dark colors to contrast the dark and the light um, let's see and and then we have the texture texture of the sun that we kind of try to show with um, with um, salt and then um, value is darks and lights and the dark dark color here against the light um, lightish colors of the sun um, make it a um, powerful interesting picture so. Um, there's lots to learn about the sun and just knowing that it's vital to us. It's, um, it's really good to remember that here is a solar flare and up here is a solar flare. So I'll just label this one closer to it. Solar flare. You, you don't have to write these down, but just so that you know. These things, is, they're giant storms on the surface of the earth. And then these, um, I'll draw some a little bit closer. Sunspots are cooler areas on the earth. I mean, on the sun, sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, and then the corona is um, the outermost layer of the sun. So, with nature journaling, it's great to do both drawings um, and writing. So that's why we do both. And you can um, write down as much information as you and your parents would like, and you can add more if you want. So, um, let's see if there's anything else. Um... I think I said it's the largest object in our solar system, and of course it's the center of our solar system. That's what all the other planets, including ours, revolves around. And um, hundreds of years ago, people thought that um, everything else revolved around the Earth, but they learned differently. So um, I hope you have a fun time trying out different methods using markers. Like I said, if you don't have the markers or if you just want to do watercolor, you can do kind of the same thing with just painting in blotches of color and letting them blend together. 
and um, crayons or um, oil pastels help to resist the color, the dark color. It makes it just makes it easier to keep light colors um, in relation to the dark colors around you. So um, have a great time this week learning about the sun and sunrises and sunsets and um, enjoy all the beauty that's out there because of the sun. Bye, everybody.